Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. So recently I put out this video. And some people asked me to explain how I did it. It is essentially a first person controller walking in a 3D scan and it has no lighting, just the natural lighting baked into the scan texture with some old camera effects on top of it. Those effects help with the realism and especially to hide the 3D scan imperfections, plus some really cool aesthetics too. The modeling and the lighting in the 3D scan is like perfect because it's real life. And in the end, you get excellent graphics without much work, which is very welcome. It works really well if you are making a game for like a game jam and want to impress people about the graphics of your game, but you don't have a lot of time to do it. But it's not really suitable for real projects if you're making a commercial game, for example, because you have some limitations. Your dynamic objects won't have a perfect lighting and it's kind of hard to combine multiple 3D scans. You technically can do it if you scan yourself, but at this point, it's better just do regular 3D model instead. And just bear in mind that when I say 3D scans, I'm talking about full environment scans and not only small models or props. And as I said, 3D scans without any work put on them have a lot of little imperfections and they are not optimized at all they have a lot of polygons and you don't want that in a commercial game i've made it in unity so i'll be showing how to do in unity but i'm pretty sure you can achieve this in any engine just following this video the first thing you want to do is go to a 3d store i personally recommend sketchfab search for environment scan or room scan or something like that then you'll find a list of 3D scanned environments that you can choose from. A lot of them are paid, but others are free. So choose what you think is best and download it. I've chosen this one, the King's Hall. It looks like a stark place. I don't know where it is, but it's very beautiful. After you've done that, you import the environment to Unity and then just drag and drop it to your scene. Right now it looks very broken, but it's because we need a material. But before that, make sure the texture size is set to max. The standard import size is like 2048, I think. But sometimes 3D scans can use bigger textures. In that case, for example, is 8192, an 8K texture. Uh, make sure to adjust that and hit apply. Then you can go ahead and create a material. Set it to use a non shader and drop the texture on it. Then you want to import a first person controller to your scene. I'm using this mini first person controller. It's free. And if you hit play, we already have something working, but we are not done yet. If you have any light in the scene, you can delete it and nothing will change because you are using an unlit shader. But as you can imagine, when we put a lead object in the scene, they are completely black. You can fix that. You only need to find the light sources in the scene and create lights in their correspondent places. Here, all the lighting comes from those windows. So I'll just create some point lights in every one of them. Then it's just a matter of adjusting their range and intensity until it roughly matches the 3D scan. It won't be perfect, especially because you can't cast shadows on the environment and vice versa, but it gets good enough. In my scene, I've decided to create a reflection probe and a transparent plane with zero roughness. So it gives the impression that the floor is reflective, but you don't have to do this. Now the scene is ready. We just have to work in the camera effects. The most important part of this is the post-processing Create an empty object and attach a volume component to it. Make sure your camera has this post-processing checkbox marked so we can display the effects. Now we can start by adding the post-processing effects to our volume. Start by adding a tone mapping and set the mode to ACES. Add a color adjustment and lower both the contrast and the saturation a bit. 
You can play with the boss exposure if you want to. You definitely want some bloom. And if you want your footage to look like it is being recorded by a crappy camera with a low dynamic range, increase the intensity and lower the threshold. One thing that really makes a difference in the bloom is adding a dirt texture. Go to textures.com and search for a dirt texture like this one with the black background. Attach it to the dirt texture in the bloom. And now when we are close to a bright surface, the dust in the camera lens will pop like this. Now add some lens distortion and tweak it. Some depth of field and motion blur are important too. Just make sure they are set up right. Add some vignette to darken the screen edges. And at last, to give that analog feeling, add chromatic aberration and film grain and push their intensities until it feels right. Another thing that will increase the feeling that your game was really recorded by a real camera is camera shake. I'll use a very simple approach, but you can improve this by making the camera shake only when the character is moving and etc. I'll be using Cinemachine for this. So after you added Cinemachine to your project in the package manager, create a new camera and attach a Cinemachine brain component to it. And in our character controller camera, disable the camera component and replace it by a Cinemachine virtual camera. On noise, choose basic multi-channel purling in the virtual camera. And in noise profile, choose handle normal mild. One thing that you may have noticed with all the analog cameras are glitches, like this. So let's add some glitches. First, you need a video like this one, a black background with a lot of glitching. You can find it very easy just by searching for analog glitch effect or something like this. Then you want to create a plane or a cube. Position the plane so it fits in the camera field of view. You want to cover the entire image, but no more than that. Now in the plane, create a video player and set it to play the glitch video in a loop. Create an unlit shader and assign it to the plane. In the material in surface type, choose transparent and blending mode to additive. Now there's only one thing left to do. Everyone knows that all the videos were displayed in very low resolutions. We could just lower the game resolution, but it would just look very different from a low resolution video. I'm not sure why, but it has something to do with how pixels are processed in both scenarios. But like everything else, we can fake it. First, make sure your camera is using some great anti-aliasing. Otherwise, you just end up with a lot of jagged edges. Create a render texture in size, choose a really low resolution. Here I'm using 640 by 360. In filter mode, change it to point. Now in the camera, scroll down to output and assign the render texture to the texture output. Now to see the render texture, you need to create a canvas, change it to scale with screen size and put the resolution of your screen. Create an image inside the canvas, set it to stretch in both axes and set the margins to zero. Finally, in the texture of our image, choose the render texture. The camera is now rendering to the render texture, so you'll get a warning in the game view saying that no cameras are rendering. Just create a new camera and adjust it so it doesn't render nothing and the warning should disappear. And that's it. I added some noise audio in the background to resemble a camera too and this is the final result.